Joseph from West Houston has a question about, well, ventilation variables. It, well, the variables are that he has a combination gable and hip roof, and he's having a little challenge with the ventilation with it, Tom. Joseph writes to us, the hip is on the rear of the house over a utility room, about a six by eight utility room, and I added foil radiant barrier on the gable part of the attic, but the hip was too low to access. Well, since we had broken pipes in that utility room in February, I now have the ceiling down and can access the rafters. Thing is, the rafter layout in the hip has no channels for air to flow to the ridge vents like the gable part. Is it a waste of time to attach the radiant barrier to the rafters there? I like this question. It's a simple answer, uh, but the fact of the matter is people do confuse these things. A radiant barrier works on its own. It just has to be installed right and it's going to work. So definitely put your radiant barrier in. It stops the heat, the radiation from coming in. That, that, that's all that heat that you, your air conditioner has to pump out. It has nothing <clears throat> to do with airflow. Airflow does something totally different. If you can't have it, don't put it in. It's perfectly fine. Radiant barrier will work. Insulation will work. There are three different things. You have conduction, convection, and radiation. Radiant barrier takes care of the radiation. Convection allows the hot air to rise, removes the moisture in the attic, so your insulation which stops the conduction from the hot and the cold touching. It's, it has an R value, it resists heat flow. It takes care of that. So all of them work together really well, but you don't need to have one to have the other. The one that's missing the most, which is unfortunate, is a radiant barrier. In many cases, I'd rather see a radiant barrier in some attics than I would the other two, believe it or not. But in this case, do what you can do, put the radiant barrier in, forget about the airflow. Okay, because it's gonna it's gonna push the stuff back. The thing that I learned about radiant barriers from you is that is that it just stops it right here. Wherever you put it, it's stopping it. It doesn't help over there or over there, right? Because the radiant heat is coming direct. Is it? And you you have to put it wherever that radi radiating heat is coming. Is that, do I have that right? You do have that right because radiation travels in a direct straight line from its source. <clears throat> the source, of course, is the sun. It's the heater. So it does not seek openings like hot air will. It'll go around things, come through cracks and crevices. That's not how radiation transfers. It goes straight down, it gets stopped if it has a radiant barrier, and then it turns around and goes back. If you don't have a radiant barrier, it goes to the insulation and it heats it up, which then the insulation uh, rejects the heat into the attic, which heats the attic up. So you have those other things, but it'll keep going until something either absorbs it or stops it, and a radiant barrier stops it when used properly. You want to do things properly? Click on that blue Ask Tom button right there. Fill out this form, send in the question. Tom will help you just like that, because he was on the right path. Tom just had to kind of like bring him in to bring him home. So, and we're happy to yeah. do that, all right? So go ahead and, and, do, and take care, take advantage of Tom. It's free and he does one every day because he likes to help folk. That's why he's doing this. And uh, we post them every day at homeshowradio.com, our Facebook page. And of course, you'll find hundreds and hundreds of them at our YouTube channel where when you're watching them, help us out. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. It'll help make it easier for other people to find them.